program is about. So, um, and I'm going to warn you guys, after my introduction and introducing the speaker as well, I'm going to turn video off so that um, to enable the network work better, so it's not cutting in and out. So my name is Tewa Onosanya. I am the founder and editor-in-chief of Exquisite Magazine, and Exquisite Magazine is the founder of the Eloy Awards and um, Eloy Awards Foundation, which is, an, uh, um, which is a foundation aimed at sustaining women empowerment. So our aim is to be able to do this through access to networking events, trainings, entrepreneurial trainings, um, mentoring sessions with different people in the industry, in different industries, access to affordable finance, so loans that have cheaper interest rates. We're all about getting that for, our, um, for people on the Eloy platform and also grants. So at the moment, we only have one person that we've awarded a grant to, but we're in the process of um, getting funding to be, able to, uh, um, to be able to give more grants to more business owners. So our big aim is to sustain women empowerment. So the Eloy Sustainable Empowerment Webinar Series is about getting women to talk about different aspects of their businesses that would help them to sustain and grow their businesses in this new normal that we have found ourselves. This new normal being post-COVID, during COVID, because I believe COVID is probably going to be around for a while, but we just need to be able to you know, keep our businesses afloat and take precautions. So today we're on day two of the Eloy Sustainable Empowerment Program. And our speaker is Augusta Owoka, for whom I'm hoping can connect to me now. Can you hear us, Augusta? Hello. I can hear you. I can Perfect. hear you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, let me see if I start the video so you can see me. I don't know. <laughs> What's going on? I don't understand. God help us with all the networks all over the world. So um, we have a few people that have joined now. I guess we're not going to wait for too long for other people to join in. But as people come in, they will just be joining in. So I'm going to do a, a brief introduction about Augusta so that we can start. So I'll read her bio. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to um, let someone in. Hold on one second, please. Yes. Okay. I'm just, um, I've let that person in. So, Augusta, whilst you're getting your video on as well, I'm going to read your bio. And okay. it goes thus. So, Augusta Umwokafo is a business development consultant and entrepreneur. She is an efficient operator and manager of human and material resources, a certified supply chain professional, and um, from the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply Management. She's a foreign and Commonwealth trained international business facilitator and customer relationship manager. She has a graduate diploma in sustainable development, so we have a pro in the house with a long oh list of courses attained, which include commercial relationship management, IT for businesses. She's um, a professional at disruptive marketing, emotional intelligence at work, and human fundamentals. The span of her experience includes commercial work, supply chain, resource management, project management, and a whole lot of things which she has developed, which is being developed through women economic empowerment. Her contributions and achievements over the years as led or oh, as lead commercial officer and trade development manager at the British High Commission in Nigeria, and also as a business development director at the indigenous oil company IGPES Limited, and as the founder of the Enterprising Women Nigeria, a social enterprise for community development, and currently a principal consultant of Ashrop Consulting Services. She's a business development, she a business development, business development concern focused on growth strategies and sustainability are all geared towards development. Augusta is married with children. We welcome you once again to the Eloy Sustainable Empowerment Program. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, many thanks to Tella. And um, let me see if I can play, you know, a start video. 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, you can, hear, you can hear me. See you. Hallelujah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, uh, I want to say thank you to yourself and to the Eloy Awards Foundation for putting together this uh, sustainable business series. It's, uh, it's great for us to be able to rub mine. Community is very important for development. We can come together and discuss what challenges we are facing to profess solutions and to move forward. Mm -hmm. Opportunities like that should never really be missed because yeah. community comes first. There's no individual, there's no me. You know, in, in development, it's us. Yeah. And, for us to move forward. So thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. I appreciate everyone who has come on board and uh, it's hopefully we'll have a robust question and answer session towards the end and also contributions from others because I want to hear from uh, your experiences and uh, how you have, you know, made it through these trying times as it were. So uh, without wasting much time, let's get straight to the presentation at hand. I am waiting. Oh, you can share your screen. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Oh, I see. Um, maybe it's the network because it hasn't sent me anything to let you. Mm -hmm. Have you clicked on share screen? I did. Oh, it didn't. You had. Well, you had. It says you have disabled. Uh, dis uh, enabled. Or what, what did I read? Did I read that wrong? I, hold on, let me just try this again. Okay. So try it now. Okay. Um, can you still see me? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, so go to the bottom of the screen and do share screen. Yeah. Okay, I think it will work better now. I think it will work better now. Okay. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So today we're going to be discussing sustainability as a business development strategy. Okay. A business development is about taking the business higher getting the business better, making it a more, uh, robo a, a more resourceful business, increase in return on investment. Business development is about understanding how to move your business from point A to B, B being higher ground, okay? And so how is sustainability a strategy? First of all, I will start by saying, simply put, sustainability, Sustainability, this is the definition. What is sustainability? It derives from sustainable development, okay? It's a business approach to creating long-term values by taking into consideration how a given organization operates in the ecological, social, and economic environment. It is built on the assumption that developing such strategies fosters company longevity. Sustainable business strategy is integration of economics and environmental and social aims into a firm's goals, activities, and planning with the aim of creating long-term values for this firm, its stakeholders, and the wider society. This means that the strategy is formulated and executed so that the needs of the firm and its stakeholders are met today while protecting and sustaining and enhancing the natural and man-made resources for future use. Hmm? Is this a tall order? Do you consider this to be a tall order? Can companies operate profitably in an environmentally conscious world? Hmm. The answer to this can be found in the emerging lifestyles and cultures. People are generally making healthier choices. People are much more savvy in, you know, when they go out to purchase things. You see them, they pick up the uh, items they are buying, whether it's for consumption uh, uh, into the body or even for use on the body or in the, their homes. They are reading to know what is it made up of? Is it safe for me? Is it uh, okay for the people around me? So we are more savvy in terms of our, uh, our consumption patterns. 
And we're also more socially aware. In recent times, you saw what happened. Uh, people are being called to order for exhibiting uh, poor social skills, racial you know, slurs and uh, discriminations of any sort. People are not accepting it. Society is becoming less accepting of this. And therefore, we're living towards a, a world where, or, or we are moving towards a world where people are being called to do things just the right way. So there's generally a leaning towards wellness and well-being and being better in our society. This is what is driving the environmental and social awareness, okay? And that is what sustainability is about. The, the last couple of months has been, you know, really uh, unpredictable. None of us saw what has happened, happened, uh, saw it coming, but it happened, okay? Um, we usually, as a people, we thrive on predictability. We thrive on being able to predict what will happen, you know, in our, so that it, it, it fuels our lives, our investments, our decisions. But the last, since March 2020, really, none of us has been able to predict uh, this is what's going to happen and this is how it's going to affect my business and this is what I need to do. So, you know, the, the world, our lives as we know it, has been disrupted, okay? So, how then do we now, um, uh, how does sustainability play a role in this? I don't know how that red light came on board. Is it me? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so we're no longer relying on predict predictions to survive. Right now, the best way for us to survive will be to rely on sustainable development goals, okay? Sustainability derives from sustainable development. You know, it's assumed that resources are finite. They're not gonna be there forever if we abuse them, if we don't use them right. That's, that's the, the premise of sustainable development. So we have to use the resources available to us conservatively. And uh, we have to think in terms of not just us, but our children and the future generations to come. It's made up of pillars. Sustainable, sustainability is made up of pillars. Okay, sustainable, let me, the, the definition I like the most, it will be the one by the United Nations, which talks about, um, which defines sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Okay, uh, the sustainability principles call us to think beyond ourselves, to invest in future generations by living responsible lives with the resources, both man-made and natural. The principles of sustainability are the foundations of what this concept presents. Therefore, sustainability is made up of three pillars. Prof, uh, economy, society, and environment, which in our everyday term could be termed profit, people, and planet, okay? Current realities. I don't know how that red line got, came on my website. Is that on me, or I don't know what that is. It's probably from the, the cursor, but wait, we're fine. We can yeah, that's fine. It's not disturbing us. We'll just carry on. Yes. Okay, yes. so what have we experienced since March 11, 2020, when uh, the United Nations, uh, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 to be a pandemic. It's been a disruption of our lives as we know it, okay? Uh, there's been a rise in, um, there's, you know, economic downturn, there's been economic downturn because of the restrictions. But beyond that, in Nigeria, we were already having economic challenges because simultaneously as this was happening, there was the oil glut, which happened because two uh, major oil producers, Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia, were going into a price war. And therefore, there was an excess of oil produced and we do not have our own reservoirs, you know, because we produce and we sell. Nigeria is not a country where we store. And even if we store, it made no difference because the price crashed. The price crashed so disastrously that we were all in a, a panic situation. All the companies that depended hitherto on the oil industry were affected from banking to uh, service companies. Anybody who was servicing the oil industry directly was already in a panic mood before the pandemic set in. So the pandemic now came with its own challenges, its own peculiar challenges. We are now 
faced with restricted movements were indoors. Schools are no longer, you know, people are no longer going to schools. Companies are having to uh, lay off staff because they could not cope. You know, a lot of companies, startups could barely cope. Even in the major uh, companies, it was last in, first out. And then our world changed. There was a huge dependency on um, IT, uh, which many of us were not prepared for, which the world actually was moving towards. But it was now the pace at which we were supposed to get there was supposed to be like maybe in four or five years when we you know, do more things with uh, the electronic and the um, artificial intelligence. But we found ourselves, you know, jump starting and doing more of what was, we, you know, we was to come, became the norm for today and immediately became what we do today. So this, you know, our world was upside down as it were. Nigerian was really hard hit. And everybody, both from the really small, um, how will I say it, from the really uh, the primary producers like farmers to secondary, uh, like schools and tertiary institutions and consultants, everybody was affected. Services, everybody was affected. You know, businesses, you know, irrespective of what kind of business you offer, people were affected by the. Um, Okay, uh, we're going backwards. We should be going forward, shouldn't we? Okay, so how do we deal? How do we deal with these situations we find ourselves in? I think there is the immediate reaction, which has to be done fast, which is what we need to do immediately. And I think a lot of people are already there. You know, we need to take stock. Take stock. Taking stock and aligning is you know, it's both a mental and a physical thing. Taking stock and aligning is about really coming to terms with what it is that is going on with your organization. Where are you in terms of your uh, ability, really your capability? Are you able to continue to operate as you operated prior to uh, the pandemic? Are you able to uh, keep managing your resources and you know, meeting your obligations to clients and your, your team and your stakeholders as you did prior to this uh, dispensation. So taking stock, so you take stock, you realize what's different. And then aligning is about coming to terms with what really is going on now. What, are the, what is the, re, re, the reality as it affects you and your business? What is the current reality? My clients cannot come to me because they are, there's restriction in movement, or my clients do not need my goods because it's not an essential at this point, you know? So there's so many things that taking stock and aligning um, brings up or spurs up as it were. Do you need a new channel to market or do you need to create new products and services? Whatever it is you need to do, this is what will uh, be the result of you taking stock and aligning. That information will be, will be gathered. The assessment tools that you can use, there's a SWOT, there's a pestle to capture your truth. This information you gather from the assessments will enable you to take the right decision, make the right decisions, okay? And then there's compliance. The thing about compliance really is, it's better to comply than to pay fines and then to uh, have lawsuits thrown at you. Compliance with uh, the government regulations and as it concerns your business making sure that you are on the right side of the law. It's a very, very important uh, move that needs to be made for your business to sustain. And then putting, it's not just about external uh, compliance, even internally, make sure your company and the employees follow all laws and regulations, standards and ethical practices. Corporate compliance covers both internal policies and procedures, as well as government laws and regulations. Enforcing compliance helps your company prevent and detect violation of rules, which protects your company from fines and lawsuits, okay? And then you need to be proactive, engage proactively. Being proactive with your business is about being the one in the driving seat, thinking ahead, not waiting for things to happen. Don't be reactive, you need to be proactive. A lot of thought process, a lot of strategizing, you know, up there, and then really thinking, 
you know, before you act, not letting everything be spontaneous, but let the process what it is you are going to do. If you want something, you have to go out for it because it won't come to you. Make decisions and then plan out the actions that will help you, you know, achieve the expected results. Then strong online presence. The benefit of being online is increased visibility. More people get to see you. You, you have a, access to a larger market, okay? And more importantly, you are able to manage your narrative. So what you tell the clients is what they hear. What you tell them about you is what they hear. So you manage what information you put out there. So have a strong online presence. If you're actually selling goods and services, maybe it's time for you to think E, going E, having an E market where people can come to you to buy your goods without necessarily coming into the office, into your physical space. You know, structure yourself in a way to be able to continue to provide your goods and services online. And now, oh dear, and now, don't worry, go uh, Okay, partnerships and collaborations is the future. In fact, it's not the future. We used to say that's the future, but it's the now. We need to work better in partnerships. We need to uh, come to projects in partnerships with others. We need to appreciate that. It's no longer competition, competing against, but competing with, okay? So that's the new way of doing business. Think what is best for your business. The website, you've created the website, you know, social media, what social media handle is best for you, but also think in terms of collaborating with others, of working with others to take your business forward. Uh, wait, for instance, your suppliers. Think about your suppliers. Think of them as partners. Think of your team. Think of them as partners in the journey to achieving your vision, okay? When every, you, you get a better result when everyone around you is happy and feels like there's something at stake for them. Salary is, you know, if, if it's their salary that is their benefit, let it be spelled out. Each member of the team should know what their role is and how they contribute to meeting the company's goals, the company's vision. How, you know, they, every member of the team needs to be made to realize that this is how you are important. This is why you are here. This is why your role is important, okay? The next one is environmental awareness, okay? We cannot do sustainability today and without being environmentally aware. Environmental awareness is about recycling, it's about waste management, it's about you know, um, being aware of what is up in terms of society. Like we spoke about in the beginning, things are changing, what people are looking at is changing. So you need to be aware of all these things and incorporate them, the changes, see how it affects your business and how you can take your business forward positively with these things in mind. That you need to be community minded. You see, it's no longer, you're no longer a lone ranger. You should think in terms of your community. For instance, if you want to buy goods and services, think first about your community. Can you get it from within your community? You know, if you keep buying from elsewhere, the one in your community will not improve. You need to encourage people who are working within your community to get better. So if, you, if you're going to buy from them, if you doubt the quality of their products, for instance, you could try communicating with them how to get their products to that level where you are able to work with them or their services to that level where you are able to uh, bring it into your own space. Think community because what affects one in a community affects the other. The more people in the community that are financially uh, uh, able to purchase goods and services, the better for everybody. Okay, so these are the, th the, the things you need to act on fast for your company to move forward in this current dispensation. Take stock and align, be compliant, think proactively, have a strong online presence, go into partnership with your suppliers and with your staff, and be environmentally aware and community minded. Okay, so now let's talk strategy. Let's talk strategy. You are now uh, thinking long term. This is no longer about acting immediately. You've done the first part, which was what you needed to do to get your company to where you want it to be. How do you now uh, become the company that would sustain in the long term? What are the things that you need to know? What are the things that that you as a company owner or a business owner needs to be aware of to help you build a sustainable business. 
first of all, you need to build the business on core, core values, your core beliefs. What this means is those things that are important to you, those things that are dear to you. For instance, this uh, presentation we are having, Mrs. Anosanya is organizing it because she gets a personal satisfaction from doing things that are impactful, things that are able to take us all you know, to the next level, not individually, but collectively. So there are people who care about children and they want to care about how children are taken care of. There are people who love to cook and they want to cook and make money from that. Yes, but let it be about your core values, not just, oh, I want to cook but I want to make food that is like X, okay? Or I want to make sure that children are well cared for. Think your core value. What is it that is really, really very important to you? What are the things? Are you somebody who loves the way people look? Are you like fashion, or, you know, somebody who is really into fashion? You want to help people dress up? Think about things like that, okay? And then you need to study trends. Study trends and embrace change. Mm. Yes, because you see, in studying trends, in studying trends, you are uh, seeing what actually is happening around you. Being able to understand, not, don't always feel threatened by change. See what's going on and see how it can translate into an opportunity for yourself and for your business. Study trends. Understand that these things that are happening, what is it that I could be doing to uh, help society and also profit from it? Remember when COVID started, there are companies that immediately went into the manufacture of uh, sanitizers. They previously made hand lotions and made uh, you know, uh, soap for washing the hands. You know. But when, when uh, the, the pandemic was declared, they immediately saw that there was an opportunity for them to manufacture sanitizers. They hit the ground running. There were companies that realized that PPEs and uh, hand gloves and face masks were going to be needed, not just by individuals, but by health workers, and they too swung into action. You see, there is the saying that the early bird gets the worm. In business, it actually is the truth, because those people who move fast are the ones who actually benefit from trends. People who are able to translate trends into opportunities are the people who benefit the most from it. Okay, so learn to appreciate trends, learn to embrace change, and learn to be able to translate it so that you can uh, benefit from it. Sorry, can I cut you off a minute, please? Um, okay, because please. I need you host, I can't let people in. Do you, can you? Oh dear, that's not good. <laughs> can you see um, at the top? There are probably there are people trying to get in. How do I know? Remaining. Um, uh, click on participants participants at the okay i see yeah yeah okay so there should be people on the on your right that want to get in invite one yeah, well, i don't so know invite that person okay admit. i think i've done that admit it should uh -huh. say admit it doesn't give me that power i think because it's originally not mine i don't know right. let's see okay all right go ahead go backwards yeah so um what do we do what do we do I, I want you to going? be able to achieve purpose. Let me see if I can try again. It, but it, right now, it gives you the numbers, but it doesn't... Uh, okay, you know what? Over. Make me the host. Click on Eloy okay, Foundation. Just a few minutes, yeah. Okay, Eloy Foundation. Um, and then make me host. Click on more. More, okay. And then make me the host. I click on more. I see chats. Um, make oh, nine. Something host. No, it's not. Yeah. I don't think I have that power either. Can you go back in and change it? <laughs> I can't. That's the thing. <laughs> you have to change it. Let me see. Uh, Eloy Foundation. Yeah. Um, so click on Eloy Foundation. Click on more. Make mm host. -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that. I made you the host. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's hope that works. Change host here. Yeah. Uh Aha. -huh. Okay. Yeah. So please continue. Okay, so um, we've talked about core value, we've talked about studying trends and embracing change. Now, I wanna talk about value proposition, okay? Uh, if you, one, one of the ways is to ensure that, um, what is this? Oh my goodness, sorry about that. Have you let them in? Yes, I have. 
Okay. Focus, on, focus on creating value proposition, yeah? It is not that great people don't exist. It's not that the technology builds are not the greatest technology, but it's about figuring your go-to-market strategy that drives value, okay? Value proposition is about your go-to-market strategy that drives value in terms of what the client is looking for for his problems or for his challenges. So that if you don't get the timing right, if you lose touch with the value proposition, then you cannot get, you know, then you cannot get, the, uh, there has to be that understanding of what it is you're selling and where, what the customer needs. There has to be a point where it meets. If you don't get that right, then, you know, you, you get completely lost in the process of uh, setting out your business. Don't ever lose sight of the fact that in the, at the end of the day, the business, the purpose of your business is to drive value for your customers. Focus on creating high value, high capabilities useful for people. This doesn't